Hello everyone and welcome to my channel this is the 28th part of what if Deku had a robot wolf I hope you enjoy link to the original story and author in the description. Chapter 28, Intermission Well, that was an exciting second round, Midnight said, the 44 students who had taken part in the second round standing before her whilst the four members of the wild, wild pussycats stood behind her on the stage all of you performed admirably out there, but sadly, only 16 of you can pass on to the next round. The names of the members of the four teams who had passed appeared on the screen behind her. Yusako, Galastram, Shihara Kazuki, Mei Hatsum, King Explosion, Jack Mantis, Real Steel, Maburo Mikami, Kriati, Red Riot, Venus, Anima, Tentacle, Vine, Grape Juice, and Froppy. Izumi was happy that she had managed to get through to the third round, but she was disappointed that her friends Hitoshi and Nito didn't pass, and annoyed that Katsuki was able to pass in their stead. But then again, it's difficult to keep away from him for long. Gods know she knows what that's like, he can be a persistent bastard. That, and getting a beanbag fired at you from a cannon was bound to hurt. Especially when it hits you in the privates. Thankfully Momo made him an ice pack. To those who passed to the third round, don't celebrate just yet. You still have the one-on-one -on -one battles to go through midnight said, but to those who did not pass, do not worry. You will still be able to show off your talents during the recreational games after the lunch break. Once they were dismissed they all made their way towards the tunnels and out of the arena. Yeah. Inesa suddenly shouted, startling everyone around him, who were mostly students from 1A, as the students of 1B and the two general education students had split off that was such a hot-blooded match. I loved it. Wow dude, chill, Denki said yeah, I admit it was fun but please, keep the noise down, your voice echoes like mad in these tunnels. Since when were you so knowledgeable when it comes to acoustics? Rikido asked. I'll give you three guesses Denki replied and the first two don't OW. He said before Kyoka poked him lightly with one of her jacks. Kyoka just sighed and shook her head. Hold on, Inesa, how did your team lose their headbands? Achiko asked, you surrounded them with a tornado. You are, yeah. We did Inesa said, sounding embarrassed, but the tornado I formed may have blown off our headbands and we were unable to retrieve them. Our hubris led to our downfall Fumikage added, having been a member of Inesa's team. Well at least you two had cooperative teammates, Hantis said the general education student we paired up with was just so self-centered. He refused to be a horse, insisting on being the rider so that the world could see him sparkle. Dot. He said with a groan it would have been better if he was the front horse and used his quirk sparingly. But he didn't, and kept leaving us open when he had bowel problems. We should have gone with the other general education student who passed, Kyoka added he might have been more cooperative. Honestly, I don't think it would have changed much, a boy wearing a gas mask said beside her, causing Mina to jump. A Wade Hadu. When did you get here? Kyoka asked loudly, having not heard the boy walking beside her. I've been here the entire time, the boy said I didn't exactly have anyone else to leave the arena with. So I left with the nearest group, which ended up being you guys. I take it that you must be Sadao then, Fumikage said. Yep, th that's me, the boy said with a nod Sadao at Sushi, General Education Class 1E. I teamed up with some of the 1B students. Okay, Denki said, so, you wouldn't know the other general course student who made it to the second round? You mean Yuga right? Sadao said before shaking his head sorry, but I believe he's in class 1C. Most of the students who failed the practical part of the entrance exam but still managed to get into UA are put into 1C. I never took part in the practical. Oh yeah, I've heard about that, Izumi remarked that's the class where most general education students who managed to get onto the hero course through the sports festival come from. I've always wondered why that was. Well now you know, Durandal said. Izumi nodded before turning to Sadao well, you did well to get this far. Also sorry that you didn't manage to get to the third round. Ah uh, don't worry about it, Sadao said I didn't want to get onto the hero course anyway. If you didn't want to be a hero, then how did you pass to the second round? Toru asked. Sadao sighed, one of the 1B students picked me up and carried me to the finish line, having mistaken me for one of his classmates he replied, I have no idea how he managed to do that seeing as I'm wearing a gas mask and have two tanks on my back. 
something none of the hero course students have. There was a choir of O's from the surrounding hero course students, so why do you have that when you're a general education student? It's for safety reasons, Sadao said my quirk is dangerous. I can generate a poisonous, sleep-inducing gas. If you inhale it you will be basically comatose until it's treated. I'm not immune to it either, so I wear a gas mask so that I don't accidentally knock myself out. And the tanks on my back act as both an oxygen tank and a storage tank for my gas, just in case I accidentally produce some. Ah, I see. That safety support equipment you're wearing then Izumi said. Safety support equipment being support equipment, equipment designed to allow people with dangerous quirks to live a normal life. Yep, can't safely leave the house without it, Sadao said, caused a few issues for me over the years. Izumi nodded. But now that she's gotten a better look at him, he seemed familiar somehow. But she couldn't place where she'd seen him before. Oh well, she could worry about that later. Oh fuck I have to fight you guys now. Chiharu suddenly blurted out, a panicked look on her face as she suddenly realized what passing to the third round meant. Mina just patted her shoulder with a smirk, don't worry, I'm sure you'll do well. Izumi shook her head before she joined the members of Team Phantom Thief, sorry you guys didn't get through to the third round. That's okay, Nito said with a smile, we weren't aiming to get to the last round anyway. Izumi looked at him with a confused look what? We weren't aiming to get to the third round, Hitoshi said. In fact, Himiko and I weren't planning to use our quirks, and passing to the third round would be very bad for us since it'll make people focus on us and our quirks. Which is a bad idea considering how useful our quirks are the less people who know about them. The less people who know what we can do, the better Himiko added with a smile. Oh. Izumi said with a smile, realization on her face that's quite smart the one downside of the sports festival, it shows everyone in the world your quirk and what you can do with it. Very good if you want to become a limelight hero like herself, but very bad if you want to become an underground hero like Himiko and Hitoshi, whose quirks work better the less people know about them. Case in point, eraser head. She only knew of him and his quirk because of the sports festival. That footage was on the internet, it was out there and could be found with something as simple as a Google search. It's why very few UA hero graduates became underground heroes, the sports festival made it difficult to avoid the spotlight. Wait, if that was your plan, why did you end up with so many points? Durandal asked. Simple, we were a distraction Nito replied since we had no intention of passing to the third round, we decided to run a distraction and keep the more dangerous teams away from you. And Yui joined in because she didn't feel like she was ready to fight in the third round Hitoshi added with Yui nodding in agreement, even if that wasn't her only reason. Izumi looked at her friends with a look that was a mix of confusion and surprise. They protected her? They deliberately went out of their way to keep people away from her. That's why Katsuki's team never went after her, and probably why she didn't see Shoto's team until close to the end. They were busy dealing with Team Phantom Thief. Tears started to form around Izumi's eyes before she leapt forward and brought Nito, Hitoshi, Himiko and Yui into a hug thank you. She cried as she hugged them, the Midoriya waterworks once again on full display. Is that normal? Sadao asked, looking at the fountains of tears coming out of Izumi's eyes. Most of the class nodded yep, that's normal Achiko replied with a smile, making a mental note to make sure that Izumi had plenty of water during the lunch period. Well, I am glad you appreciate our help Izumi, Nito said before he broke off from the hug and turned towards Momo also Momo. I hate you. I said I was sorry. Momo replied. You shot me in the dick again. Nito chided, not happy that Momo shot him in the dick again, especially since he told her not to. I was, I was aiming for Itsuka, Momo explained. Izumi smiled as she continued to hug her friends. Whilst she was happy that her friends had kept Katsuki distracted and away from her, they wouldn't be able to do that during the third round, the one-on-one -on -one fights. Whilst she was excited about it, she was also worried. There was a 1 in 15 chance that she would be up against Katsuki during her first round, and she was unsure if she would be able to face him. Even with all the support she was receiving, she was still scared of him. And even if she didn't face him during her first match, 
she would probably still face him during one of the other rounds. He was strong, strong enough to be able to make it to the finals easily. She just hoped that, no, prayed for a miracle that would prevent him from fighting her, because even though she had a quirk now, there was no way she could beat Katsuki. Meanwhile, in another tunnel, Katsuki sighed as he walked through the tunnel, a frown on his face. Tetsu Tetsu, Tagaru and Kami walking with him. He was feeling, disappointed. Yes, they managed to get to the third round, but it felt hollow somehow. Not helped by what Phantom Thief said to him. Hey, guys. Yosetsu said as he walked over to them, Aku Squad good work out there. Glad to see that we've got some people from our class moving on to the third round. Yep, Tetsu Tetsu said with a smile shame we only got six through. Would have been nice if most of us passed to the third round. Don't forget, 1A only got eight members of their class through, Tagaru said, plus two non-hero course students. With any luck, we'll beat them all, right Katsuki? Yeah, Katsuki murmured, not really focusing on the conversation. Yosetsu, Tetsu Tetsu, Tagaru and Kami looked at him with concerned looks on their faces you okay there Katsuki? Yosetsu asked. I'm fine, Katsuki said with a frown. You're sh sure? Tetsu Tetsu asked, sounding concerned you don't sound fine. Is what Phantom Thief said still bothering you? What did he mean by, bullies tend to tunnel vision? Kami asked innocently. Katsuki sighed. Might as well get it over with remember what I said on the second day of UA, that I wasn't a good person? That's I've done things that I've come to regret he asked, waiting until his friends. Huh, friends. It felt odd calling people friends, up until a year ago he would have just called them extras who were just following him around. Anyway, he waited for them to nod before continuing well, you know that slime villain incident I was involved in last year? Well, prior to that I, I was a bully he said, noting the shocked looks on his friends' faces I used my quirk to hurt people for, personal enjoyment he said, because as much as he would like to say he hurt Izumi for her own good or for some other reason, he had to face the truth. He enjoyed hurting her, far too much. You, you, were a bully? Kami said, sounding horrified. I mean, I can understand that you could be one, Tagaru said with a frown I may have hurt people deliberately as well. But that was me lashing out at people in retaliation for bullying me. But you dash, why? Because I was an idiot with an overinflated ego and no one was trying to stop me and set me straight, Katsuki replied everyone kept telling me that I was great and was going to become a great hero. I kept saying that I was going to become the greatest hero in the world, and I had almost everyone kissing up to me. But I never acted like a hero. I believed that a hero's duty was to beat up villains, nothing else. I only ever used my power to hurt people, sometimes for the dumbest of reasons. Hell, I once hit someone just for wanting to go to UA, even though they wanted to go on to the general education course. I know that how I acted was in part to no one trying to curb my attitude or setting me on the right path. But no one tried to stop me or tell me that I wasn't acting like a hero, they just let me do whatever I wanted. But I know that's not an excuse for what I did. I hurt people, insulted them dash, told someone to kill themselves dash. I'm trying to change, but 10 years of acting like you're the next best thing since All Might doesn't change overnight. Katsu Katsuki noted the shock and horrified looks on his friends' faces, which he expected. Finding out that your friend spent most of their life as a bully would be shocking, especially when you yourself had been bullied in the past as well. Okay, how the hell did you get into UA then? Yosetsu asked with a snarl, UA has an anti-bullying policy. I'm here on probation Katsuki replied, because of what I had done I had shown signs of improvement before I could apply to UA, and if I was successful in getting in, I would be on probation. That's the only way I was allowed in. One fuck up and I'm out. Not just out of the hero course, but out of UA period. With no ability to apply to any other hero course or school. And that's if I'm lucky he explained, not saying that if he was unlucky, he could end up in juvenile detention with a villain ranking, depending on just how bad his fuck up is, there are other things as well. I have to attend weekly therapy and anger management sessions, even though I was already doing those, and had my costume modified. There are supposed to be gauntlets on my arms to store my sweat, but I'm not allowed to have them until I can prove that I can use them safely, and own an explosives license. 
which I won't be allowed to apply for until my second year he said sounds dumb since because of my quirk I had to research a lot about explosives so that I don't accidentally kill someone, but, I always wanted to go to UA, it was my dream school. So, when I was told by a woman who had a sniper rifle in her arm that I was barred from every hero course in Japan unless I changed, I took every option available to me so that my dream of becoming a hero did not die. Seriously, having one of Japan's six heroes who are permitted to flat out kill villains, aka a fucking death dagger, tell you that you're not allowed to apply to any hero course in Japan, is a lot more eye-opening than say, some no-name hero who isn't even in the top 100 telling you the same, same thing. The only thing that could have been more eye-opening was if All Might himself was the one who had told him that. The others seemed a little understanding of what he was going through. Yes, they weren't going to forgive him for his past but dash. But, what was that about a victim? Kami asked, because I remember him saying something about a victim? Katsuki sighed. Might as well elaborate on why he was doing this there was one person who I had known since we were children who was quirkless. They were the one I bullied the most he said, refusing to mention Izumi by name or give any hints as to who she was, lest his friends try and help him resolve this. It wasn't because he didn't want the help, he already had plenty of that, but because this was a delicate situation and their interference could mess everything up this shit started when my quirk came in, and theirs didn't. I saw them as weak and useless, and back then, I saw everything they did as a way to look down at me, even staying away from me, which was a smart thing to do because I bullied them every single day he said before he paused for a bit something happened. It wasn't the sludge villain thing, but I did something, something I would later regret. They transferred to a different school after the incident, and I started seeking help. They transferred to Nabu. Didn't they? Tagaru asked, getting a nod from Katsuki and let me guess, your victim is in the other class? Katsu Katsuki frowned before nodding yes. I won't tell you who they are, only that they weren't in Team Phantom Thief. But yes, they are here, on the hero course no less. Wait, does that mean that a member of 1A is quirkless? Kami asked innocently. No you dash Katsuki spat before he stopped himself and breathed in and out for a few seconds before continuing. The anger management lessons were helpful, but he still had a long way to go before he didn't explode every time someone said something he either didn't like or was just plain dumb no, they're not quirkless. I saw them during the entrance exam and they had a quirk. I don't know where they got it from, but I think they were just misdiagnosed and had a very obscure quirk trigger. The doctor who diagnosed them was arrested for misdiagnosing several people, including some rich girl whose family sued him out of existence which probably wasn't what happened, but since Tsubasa and his family just vanished after Dr. Tsubasa was arrested, it's a reasonable assumption. God's Tetsu Tetsu gasped to spend so long thinking they were quirkless. I can't even begin to fathom what that would be like, he said why haven't you apologized to them yet? Don't you think I haven't already thought about that? Katsuki said loudly I bullied them for 10 years. A simple apology isn't going to just fix this. It's going to take something a lot more meaningful, and even then, they probably won't accept it, he said look, I know what I've done was wrong, I realized that. But I am trying to change. And, I want your help to do it. Due to my attitude I never really had proper friends, just classmates whose presence I tolerated. They kind of left me alone after the incident. A part of him was calling him weak for asking for help, saying that he didn't need it. But that kind of attitude got him into this, this mess in the first place. Back when this all started with Azumi just wondering if he was okay after a fall. That was the first time he felt scared, the second being almost drowned by that slime villain. It was the first time in his life where his quirk couldn't help him. How was he supposed to blow up a big ball of slime anyway? Silence filled the corridor. Tetsu Tetsu, Tagaru, Yosetsu and Kami still coming to terms with what they heard. It's not every day that you find out that one of your friends was a bully and used his quirk to hurt people, which is even more shocking when they're training to become a hero, and when a few of them were also victims of bullying. I'll admit, I've just lost every ounce of respect for you I had, Tagaru spat, causing Katsuki to flinch. Yeah, he was expecting that reaction from him but, I am going to give you the benefit of the doubt and believe that you are trying to change. You haven't exactly acted like a bully so far. I'd have to agree with Tagaru, bullying someone just isn't manly, Tetsutetsu said, but, you said you're trying to change, so I'm willing to help you. 
Yosetsu looked a bit indecisive for a few moments, ah oh, fuck it, I know I've done some dumb things in the past, so I might as well help you out. Kami was quiet, uncharacteristically quiet. It was shocking how quiet the girl was after this. She probably wasn't taking the news well. Couldn't really blame her. Thanks, guys, Katsuki said with a slight smile, I appreciate your understanding of this shit. Don't worry about it, Tetsu Tetsu said you messed up, we get that. Everyone messes up at one point in their lives. The fact you've also recognized you were wrong and are trying to change helps. Anyway, we should be getting to the cafeteria, Tagaru said lost a lot of calories during the last two events. You guys go on ahead, I'll catch up with you later. I've got to clear my head Katsuki said before he turned and walked off. Well, that went better than he expected it to go. Yeah he may have da damaged his friendship with them, but it wasn't permanent, it could still be fixed. It helped that he didn't torment them or act like a total bastard whilst he was at UA. So the bridges between him and his friends had not been burnt down yet but will need some repairing. It was just a shame that the bridge between him and Izumi had long since burned down, and the river that had once separated them had become an impossible ocean. There was no way the friendship they had when they were kids, before his court came in, could be rekindled, not after he violently destroyed it. It was pointless to try, so he was going to focus on seeking forgiveness. Even if it's just as impossible. Meanwhile, in a room specially reserved for the top 10 heroes to relax in during the intermission. Well, this year's first years seem impressive, the ninja hero, Edshot remarked as he sat down, the gray-haired man having been quite interested in the first years but, there is a lot that they need to improve on. Especially those from 1A. I would have to agree with you on that one, the fiber hero, best genus said, the denim-clad hero busy combing his hair they have promise, but they are still children. There is much they still have to learn. Still, to think villains would try and attack them so early into the year, the dragoon hero, Ryukyu said with a frown. The dragon woman, whilst glad that her niece wasn't involved in the attack, was still horrified that it happened, especially due to how many people died during the attack I'm just glad that none of the students were killed. I can't fathom just what they went through, seeing so much death at such a young age. They may look like they are fine, but they are far from healed, the flaming hair hero, Burnin remarked, flexing her fingers, the mental strain of such an ordeal will be with them for years. Good thing UA's taking good care of them. The fact, fact that none of them dropped out of the hero course is remarkable, the fighting hero, Daidoji remarked, leaning against the wall with a slight smirk, I would have expected at least one of them to have dropped out after the USJ. The fact that none of them did is a testament to how resilient they are. Daidoji was a tall, muscular woman with long, flowing black hair and reddish-brown eyes, as well as the owner of the largest bust in the room. She was wearing a tattered navy blue gakorin and matching colored cap with metal epaulets, a rope belt around her waist and tengu geta on her feet. Her J-cup-sized bosom, which none of the other female heroes in the room were totally jealous of, nope, was wrapped up in a sarasher, with bandages wrapped around her hands and wrists. She was a hero with a strong sense of justice but has a very punch-first, ask-questions-while-punching personality, as well as a love of meat. She's also good friends with Mirko, for reasons that should be painfully obvious. They're a good class, with a strong sense of camaraderie. They've got each other's backs, the turbo hero, Ingenium said with a smile, my younger brother told me that one of his classmates made a speech about how none of them had quit after the USJ, showed me a recording of it too. Quite inspiring. Plus they've spent most of their time helping each other train for the sports festival despite knowing full well that they'll be competing against each other. Let's not forget about the students from 1B, or the ones from the other courses, the digger hero, Ligan said, even with all the attention on 1A they're still giving it they're all out there. Six of them even managed to pass to the third round, as did two non-hero course students. Those Mei and Shiharu girls performed admirably so far. I can't wait to see their performance during the third round the mighty hero, Gurin remarked with a smile. The Team Dai Gurin hero duo represented the only hero team to have ever made it to Japan's top 10, the only other team to have gotten close being the Wild, Wild Pussycats. Gurin is a tall and well-built man with short, blue, spiky hair and red eyes. With blue tattoos along both of his arms which extend to his shoulders and his upper back. 
He wears long, dark brown pants with a double grommet belt tied around his waist, a traditional Japanese serisher, sandals, a red cape with his agency's logo on it, as well as a pair of flashy, red, triangular sunglasses. There was also a disproportionately long nodachi by his side. He's a boisterous, hot-headed, and extremely determined hero who's also been voted as Japan's sexiest male hero four times in a row. Which caused a great deal of broken hearts, Midnight's being one of them, when it was confirmed that he was dating the armory hero, Yoko, who recently accepted a teaching position at CI Academy. Seriously, the fallout was so bad that it caused a countrywide ice cream shortage. Lagan meanwhile was a tall young man, taller than Gurin, with wild dark blue hair, deep indigo eyes and a strong lean build. He was wearing a dark blue jacket with red stripes along the shoulders and sleeves, brown shorts, white socks, and brown boot-like shoes. He also had bandages encircled around his abdomen, a pair of goggles on his forehead, and a small drill-like charm hanging around his neck. He was a young, polite, humble, compassionate and brave hero who will stop at nothing to save those around him. A bit like Izumi really. Just ignore the small pig? Mole? Thing wearing sunglasses that goes by the name Buta that's currently sitting on his head. I'm go going to be honest, I've never heard of a single management course student who's managed to get to the second round of the UA Sports Festival, let alone the third, the wing hero, Hawks remarked, holding a large bucket of chicken wings, I thought they all skipped it in favor of showcasing their talents during the school festival. They do, preferring to use the time practicing economics, Best Genus said, but I am quite interested to see how well she fares against the hero students. This is the first time someone from her track has managed to make it this far. It'll be interesting to see a dual course hero student from the business course. There are far too few heroes who understand the intricacies of business management. That's if she meets the criteria to be given the choice, Edshot said if she wants to be a hero, she's going to need to prove she's worth investing our time to train her. Tasha Nori nodded. Since he had to save his time limit, he couldn't exactly be here as all might, especially since he hadn't told the other top 10 about what happened to him, don't worry, I'm sure you'll be quite surprised by her. It's a shame all might couldn't join us, Burton said as she walked up to Tashinori with a smirk that said, I want to eat you up, I would have liked to have heard his opinion on UA's first years, considering he's teaching here now. Tashinori gulped. Unfortunately for him, Burton had a crush on him. Which was problematic since she didn't know that he was really all might, someone she didn't have a crush on. And that was a conversation he didn't want to have. Yeah, apologies about that, but All Might's with the other teachers, Tashinori said nervously, but I can assure you that he is quite proud of how this year's first years are faring. They are fine young heroes with promising futures. They better, better be, Mirko said with a smirk, that's the next generation of heroes down there. I'd expect them to be good. And do any of them catch your eye, Mirko? Tashinori asked. Mirko waited a few seconds before she smirked and turned towards Tashinori. One of them may have caught my eye, yes. And no, I'm not sending them an internship form. I don't do teaching or teamwork. She said before she looked out of the large window and down onto the arena besides, I want to see how she fights first. It's that fluffy bunny Yusako, isn't it? Hawks remarked, causing Tashinori to cough up some blood. He was going to have some words with Midnight after this. Seriously, Bunny? He knew Azumi chose Yusako as her hero name but come on, it was obvious to anyone that those ear-like protrusions on her costume are a homage to his haircut. So why do people keep calling them bunny ears? They look nothing like them. So, what if it is? Mirko said with a smirk I'm withholding my final judgment on her until the third round. I want to see how well she does during the one-on-one -on -one fights. Tasha Nori shuddered. Just his luck that his successor would draw the attention of Mirko, the most aggressive hero he ever met. Seriously, the first time they met she asked to fight him. It wasn't a long fight, he just backhanded her into a wall, but she had been intent on fighting and beating him since. And now she was interested in Izumi. Oh dear. Just try not to traumatize her when you plan on visiting whatever agency she plans to intern with, Ingenium remarked. No pro promises, Mirko said with a smirk. I'm so sorry Azumi Tashinori thought with a frown, there's not much I can do to prepare you for getting Mirko's attention. 
At least Mirko wouldn't plan to kill her. Meanwhile, in one of the stadium's toilet cubicles, Yuga Aoyama was currently dealing with the downsides of his quirk, his bowels currently being emptied due to the strain of overusing it. Ha, huh, his quirk, could he really call it that since it was given to him by all for one? Might as well since he was in debt to him. Yes, he disliked the idea of having to spy for that man, becoming a villain wasn't a career choice he wanted to pursue. But recently, he's been rethinking his stance on that. He tried his best to get onto the hero course, but despite doing his best, he failed. He didn't get enough points during the entrance exam to get onto the hero course. It was a good thing that he had a backup plan and also applied to general education as well, just so he could get in through the sports festival. He was still of some use to all for one, he could still gather intel on the hero course students from general education, but it would have been a lot easier if he was on the hero course proper. But then the sports festival came and whilst he managed to get to the second round, he failed to get to the third. How? How did he fail to get to the third round? He did everything he was supposed to, he formed a team of strong hero course students, and he used his quirk to help collect other people's headbands. So how did he fail? And how did that girl, Yusako, manage to get first place in both events? She should have lost her headband. He should have been able to take it. It quickly dawned on him what had happened. He didn't fail, his teammates deliberately sabotaged him. He should have known they were against him from the start when they said that he would be better suited at the front of the formation, not on top as the writer as he should be. They deliberately allowed their headbands to be taken as well as deliberately slower so that they couldn't catch up to her. Earphone Jack said that she had good hearing, so why was she so bad at identifying threats and dealing with them? It was clear that they were against him, that the hero course students didn't want him as a hero. That had to be it, they couldn't have known that he was working for all for one, so, the only other explanation was that they were against him. The only non-hero course students who passed were with Yusako, clearly, they were friends with her. And then there was Yusako herself, that glory hound who got first place in the entrance exam, who also got first place in the first and second rounds. The one Tamura told him to keep an eye on. At first, he felt sorry for the girl, getting the ire of someone like Tamura wasn't a good thing, especially when they want you dead. But now he saw that as a good thing. He was there on the same exam field as her, watching as she rushed around in that robot companion of hers that can turn into a suit of armor. How she was allowed to bring that with her despite not being allowed to bring robots with them, but clearly someone at UA let it slide so that she would have an unfair advantage over everyone else. And after seeing her quirk in action, she clearly didn't need a suit of power armor to help her, so obviously she was showing off. And now she has helped two people who weren't general education students get to the third round. Why couldn't she have helped him? Was he not deserving of a chance of becoming a hero? What did those other two have that he didn't? Well no matter, if this is how they will treat him, then he might as well treat them like that in turn. All for one wanted him to spy and gather information on them and the school, then spy on them he shall. It won't be easy, he is a general education student, but he's already succeeded in gathering some information on them, gathering some more shouldn't be too hard. There was also plenty of resentment towards the hero course students, especially from general education, so finding like-minded individuals that can help him shouldn't be too hard. He was going to have his revenge against those in the hero course, starting with Yusako. His bowels suddenly chose that moment to disagree with him. He gripped his stomach as his bowels emptied again. Plan revenge later, deal with bowel issues now. He could afford to do that, wait. After all, he knows all for one, and he's a master of waiting. That will be it for this part. I hope everyone enjoyed if you did please leave a like and comment if you want part 29. If you want to hear more from me subscribe I hope to see you all in the next one.